Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Drawn to Adventure by Final Frontier Games. It plays 30 to 90 minutes, 1 to 4 players, and ages 13 and up and you and up to three adventurers are going to embark on a quest, uh, attempting to go through three fantasy worlds. You'll be rolling and writing, utilizing a interesting system uh, with this handy dandy little notebook you're going to have, kind of like Blue's Clues. And you're going to go through one, two, and then three of these maps here, trying to score points with silver, gold, and a rose stone, and or diamond, I guess you can call it. And each map is gonna give you a certain amount of value you based on completing quests, completing side quests, and defeating bosses. Acquiring those points will transfer onto the next map, and then the next map, and you'll tally up your points and score a total, hopefully more than your opponents. Each player is also going to get a handy dandy unique character with a front and a backside, giving you experience and unique abilities, along with of course at the top of your notebook, allowing you to use potions and save die for later. The game is going to revolve around you rolling dice, selecting dice, and turn order and utilizing those dice to complete your quests and of course gain experience and move around the map depending on how you choose to use the dice. Will you gather enough points in order to score the title of the most brave and wealthy adventurer by the time the game is over and will you be drawn into the adventure? Find out now down below where we show you how to play the game, what it looks like, and then my review. Welcome to the adventure in Drawn to Adventure. And as you can see, I've set this up for four players, but you'll notice that some of this stuff is already marked. So I'm just going to kind of give you a tutorial as to how it's played. Firstly, every player is going to get one of these notebooks. They're going to get a character card associated with it is a meeple of the same color. You're also going to start in one of the starting realms and I've chosen the human realm and I've taken the eight human card side quests, shuffled them up and placed them down. Depending on the number of players that you're playing with will be the number of die that you'll be utilizing. This, this one die is the first player die and the rest of these are basic die. Based on uh, the rule book, you'll add these die up to the die pool. You'll be Rolling because everybody's going to get two die every single round through the game. Uh, you're also going to be gathering a dry erase marker and you're going to go ahead and place your character on the starting area of the board. And I'll take this unused board here and I'll show you. These are the side quest zones. This is the main starting zone with the little tower and every other place is either going to be a quest, which look like these, a boss, which look like these, or a uh, specific uh, side quest area. And of course, then you have like caves and the boating areas let you move around the map. Everybody is going to start with their starting board and they're going to get two potions to begin the game with. They'll come pre-circled. Every time you cross out a location because you've completed it, it'll have an X on it and these spaces already do. And if they already do in a map, that's usually because it's a starting area or a side quest area. You're also going to be gathering uh, extra tokens, extra extra die here, and you'll be placing them here when you do, or circling them here when you do. Whenever you beat a boss, will be over here. These are any additional rules uh, to the specific map, whether it be potions you can use and what they do, or whether it be just something specifically based on the map itself. This is where you're going to acquire your points, whether it be your rubies, whether it be your gold or your silver. Each time you mark them, it'll go from left to right, top to bottom, and at the end, whatever is revealed is going to be what goes in these boxes here. You'll add them all up, it'll go into this box here, and it'll transfer to the next map. In the game, you're going to start with your character on the board, and then you are going to have the first player roll the dice. They will take all the die for the number of players, they'll take them, they'll roll them, and then the first player will start by selecting one die. That player will select their die, the next player will select a die, next player will select a die, and then the last player will get two. Then it's going to go back the other way, and each player is going to gather a die, and the final player, which is the first player, will gather its la their last die. All the die are going to have symbols on them specifically to either give you potions or to associate with the boards, the boards here, and each board has a quest that you're going to participate in. The die will either be based on movement, and they'll have a little arrow there, and it's also explained on your board as to where you can move with your die. And of course, they're also going to have those symbols, like for instance, this one here is going to be an archery symbol. So if you look at this player here, and let's say that he had these two die, and his character was here, he could go ahead and use this symbol to affect an adjacent area, just an adjacent quest. And if he or she uses that die, after everybody has gathered die, everybody is simultaneously going to use these die to mark off locations. And the left-hand side of all the locations have little symbols. Symbols could be uh, basically set aside 
side and you have to choose one of the two or they can be attached and you have to do both of them at the same time. Or they can be uh, disattached but with no cross, which means you have to do both of them, but, be, but, but they can be done on different rounds. When you complete the specific quest, you're going to gather the rewards. And these are the rewards over here. Uh, this one says you would gain a potion. So you would mark your potion area over here saying you got it. And it would say you get a free movement, which means you can move in any direction one space. So I can move into that location there. Additionally, when you complete a location, you'll make a big fat X on it. And if you ever use die, like in this case, I use this one, it's going to be discarded, meaning that all I have left is this little, uh, <laughs> this little horseshoe here. You can't go onto spaces that don't have specific quest markers or specific rules in the, in the book as to what you can do. But instead of this horseshoe, let's say we have this book here, I could use that book to mark off this area here, removing this and then gaining the rewards. So I would get another potion and I would get a silver. Mark off your silver in this area here, mark off another potion right here, and then you've used all your dice and you can be done. Um, ad ad additionally, if I didn't want to do these things, so for instance, I had to cross that out. If I didn't want to actually gather these and let's say I just had this and I had my book, I could choose to do nothing, erasing all these, and store these based on what I have available to me, to me over here. So I could store this red die here and I could store this purple book here for a later round. So when I do use them, I can mark them off. So on the next round, if I gather these things here, I could then go ahead and do the same thing I was going to do last round by marking these off and moving across completing these specific quests, right? And these are limited based on what you have available. Once you cross them off, you're not going to get them back ever. And the same is said for potions as well. So if I wanted to spend three potions to move one direction of anywhere I choose, uh, then I would have to mark three potions and I can go ahead and move. You can't move into an adjacent space unless it's completed. And in order to complete a space, you must be adjacent to it. Uh, any space that you're not adjacent to is inactive and can't be utilized. And any space you are adjacent to is active, but must be completed to move through. So this is completed. I can move through it. Uh, this is incompleted, so I couldn't move through it. Other rules are in order to go to the specific areas for your ships, you need to move to the main ship area that doesn't have a little symbol around it. And when you do that, so for instance, if I had completed these two areas here, and I had moved here and here. If I got this key here, I could then move up here and then it would transfer me to one of these areas here. So I can move across the map, but you can never just simply move into one of these areas. It must be one of these first. Caves function similarly, but you're gonna to need to go to this area here. So if I, if I had moved here from the boat and I completed this area here by getting a sword, I can go over here, complete this with a key, go here, spend a potion, and then move to the other cave zone. And when you get to these areas, some of them will have specific little uh, little trophies and you'll complete those, gain the benefit reward, which is a potion. And if you're the first person to do that, no one else can get that throughout the entire round. <laughs> Otherwise, the other spaces on the board are these guys here. These are boss areas. If you defeat a boss by being adjacent to it, having the required dice, you can move to that space um, or you can complete that space, you'll mark it off and then you'll gain the bonuses, whether it be an experience which I'll talk about in a second, or it'll give you gold and of course additional movement. And this one here has a those specific, um, what do you, a first person who does it gets it kind of a thing. And you'll also get to mark off a boss uh, from left to right for every boss you defeat. First boss, second boss, third, marking them off over here based on the rewards you get, which are over here. So that's how you move around the map and what you get. And of course you can use dice. For instance, this key will always take you down south. So if I didn't want to actually utilize this key as a key, I can just move my character one space south when I get rid of it. All right, so I've rolled my dice, I've selected my die, and now I'm going to utilize them to move or to cross off spaces on the board. Um, now let's talk about our little character here. This is our character. Whenever we gain experience, we'll mark off one of these symbols here. When you gain two of them in a specific uh, column here, uh, you're then going to go, I should say row here, you're going to then go ahead and mark this symbol off. For each one of these you mark off, you'll go from left to right and you mark off one of these guys here. Whenever you gain a new experience, you can then mark off any of these symbols or you can gain any of these resources, these four here, based on what you have highlighted. So in this case here, I can always get two potions I can get two potions whenever I use an experience as opposed to marking up one of these guys here. 
these abilities are all going to be passive or active abilities that you can use throughout the game, whether it be something like whenever you, you gain a potion whenever you draft a book, or for instance, I can spend two potions to move two spaces. So these characters all do a bunch of different things, and of course they have a front and a back, and they differ from the characters, not only in gender, and of course the type, uh, but also the different class abilities as well. So you'll utilize those. Now, you'll move across the game board until you complete three of these. And once you do that, you'll have one more round of the game. We'll then move on to the next game um, adventure mode, which you'll roll a die, and based on that, you'll move. Okay? So, and then you'll just rinse and repeat the process. So roll the die. Everybody's going to select a die. And then after that, uh, you're going to utilize the die. And the next player in turn, or turn order will take these die back. And that person will be the first player, and they'll roll. Now, the last thing I want to really talk about here, other than side quests, is this die here. This die is special. It'll give you a unique benefit, but only if you're the first player, and only if you select at the very beginning of the round. Like, plus two to the next selected die you choose. One experience. Uh, moving to any location, or moving to one space in any direction, or going ahead and having this as a wild, or four potions, a silver, or moving in one direction. So this is a very overpowered die, and usually one you should consider getting. <laughs> this here is secret quests. When you move to a quest space, like for instance, these spaces here, they have a little quest symbol on them. You'll take a card from the bottom of the deck. You'll go to the location it requires. You'll spend the currency needed, and then you'll flip this over and gain the reward shown. In this case, it's going to be to uh, experience, which is actually rather good. To transfer, how it works is You've got your you got your area, you've completed your three bosses, everybody has tallied up all their diamonds, their silver, and their gold, move it over here as a total. You'll roll the die, check the book, based on what the symbol is in the book, it will tell you where to go. So I might say, okay, head over to head over to the Trollbit Kingdom. Put your character on the space of the starting zone, add your add your score from last game, and transfer any potions, any saved die that you had previously and then begin with the first player being the last player who uh, uh the, the player who is going to go next in the sequence and you'll continue you'll do that you'll complete this one you'll check any specific rulings and then you move on to the final one here adding in your total score of both the first and second kingdoms here any potions you had from the second kingdom and any extra save die from the second kingdom place your character on the starting zone and then begin the final round of the game add up your score and whoever has the most is the winner after completing the three bosses in the third kingdom and that's basically the game drawn to adventure there's quite a lot going on here and if you need to look at the rules that's fine I hope I did a decent enough job explaining it but to summarize you get your stuff you're going to roll the die it tells you to roll select a die go in turn order so that last player gets two it'll go back the other way use those die to move and or collect um, potions and then after that, rinse and repeat with the next player going and rolling up until three bosses are defeated. That last round will trigger. Then you'll move on to the next location. Then the next location after that. And then you'll tally up your scores. And whoever has the most is the winner in Tron to Adventure. It's a pretty complex game for a small box. So when I first made my YouTube channel, I didn't much care for roll and write games. The typical ones where you roll the die, gather the resources, utilize them, mark them down, score points, and whoever has the most at the end of the game is the winner. But I now have enjoyed them much more, and there's two reasons. One reason is because they have now integrated with unique other systems. Like for instance, this one here is an adventure game attached to a roll and write, allowing you to dry a race and use different maps, and there's a whole bunch of the different mechanics. And, and, and the other reason is because I've gotten better at them, I think. I, I've, I've progressed with the roll and write skills that are needed. There's a certain engine and a style to each and every unique game that involves roll and writing. And of course, they've gotten like really, really high quality and unique. Uh, this one here is a mix. It's definitely not just a, a roll and write style game. Yes, you are rolling dice and gathering them, utilizing them to move or to basically gather resources to complete quests. But now the board's going to offer you unique options like gathering potions that will allow you to utilize them to change the dice, re-roll the die, move on the board. The die are not no longer just basic symbols that will let you do something, but they're also used as movement as well. So you can move across the board as 
to the choices of gathering the die. Uh, the game is also going to be equipped with the unique inventory system of saving dice to use later, and later could be this round or next round. And additionally, now you can get experience by fighting monsters or by acquiring a unique special die that only the first player can get and only on the first turn of that player, like uh, gathering these experience to then utilize your skills. Every character has their own unique skills and their own unique play styles. Each of the characters has a front and a back that actually do different things and have different functions and with those skills come unique tricks that you can use or uh, not only just that but also there is a special way of spending experience if you don't want any additional skills throughout the game that can then net you bonus points they can net you bonus potions so on and so forth i think you understand um what's also cool is the system of transference once you get past the first map somebody completes the three bosses you have another round you move on to the next map which is always going to change based on what game you're playing and how the die role and each map has its own unique system of rules governing how the player should play whether it be a race whether it be a gathering of resources type of game or simply whoever gets to the first space uh, in a specific map is going to block off that space for other players or force it to be more difficult for those players a bunch of unique tricks and, and, and tactics that you can kind of survey as you cross the map and uh, additionally too there's like transporters or teleporters there's ways that you can gather currency in the game based on whether you move across a port and whether you get across a certain area, you're going to be crossing off certain areas, which then is going to impact other players. It's no longer just me versus you, and the only difference is what die we choose. It's also how you move on the map, where your characters choose to utilize their tokens and skills and potions, and also, of course, the resources available to you with the unique first player die. I like all of this stuff. Another additional thing I like is the sub quest as well. You feel like you're playing a game like an MMO, World of Warcraft, or a Terra, or Wound Quest, or Guild Quest, and you get you get RuneScape. <laughs> Uh, and you'll be taking these quests, going to the location, spending the currency, flipping over the cards, and gathering a specific unique bonus resource or a specific material, uh, as well as uh, getting potions too. Uh, it just makes the game a lot fuller. There's a ton of customization to not only your character and your map and the board and how you can gather points and when you choose and where you choose to gather points, um, as well as the social interaction of the game, which comes in most roll and rates. What you choose is going to be uh, messing up your opponents, potentially, and you can kind of look and see what your other opponents need and uh, what they need on the board could coincide with what you need and so gathering a specific die first can be important and it makes all the difference in the world your placement on the map is going to very greatly benefit you and so on and so forth. You, you understand that this game just has a ton of stuff going for it. The game's a little bit longer. It can play up to about an hour and a half to two hours on your first playthrough, and it is a campaign game that I suggest you play all the way through. You can stop and play later because most of everything saves, so for each map you can just stop and come back later. There's also a solo mode to the gameplay, which is fun for you solo players out there, but for a roll and write adventure game, I like playing with additional players because I enjoy the social interaction of these type of games, so I would greatly suggest two or more players Players, but they do have a solo mode, which is actually very different than the first base, than the base game when you play with multiple players and it comes with unique characters and another unique solo deck of cards, etc, etc. Uh, the quality of the game is top notch. All of the components are high quality, beautiful thickness and, and sturdiness. These cards are excellent. All of the things you have, you can write on, even to the lowest point of just your character's name. Artwork, solid artwork throughout the entire game. It looks great. It feels great to mark off these things as you're going throughout the game. You're crossing off things. You're filling in bubbles. You're circling potions. And I really, really enjoy that fact. It's no longer just fill in the bubble, fill in the bubble, fill in the bubble. Now you have to uh, progress a quest and cross that off, or uh, fill out a experience bubble, or simply utilize your potions that you've already gained by circling them. So that all works really well with a roll and write style game. I greatly, greatly enjoyed that aspect of this game. This is definitely one of my favorite roll and writes, especially a competitive game. Uh, the previous one I had played, which was about like aliens and they're coming down and you're trying to stop them. That's a lot of fun. And it's a specifically solo play experience, which I would suggest over this one for the solo play experience. However, for a competitive game that involves two or more players, this one by far stands out among a lot of the rest. And this is just a tiny game uh, from Merchant's Cove, the larger game that was on the Kickstarter. This is kind of a secondary game here, but in itself is a game that could be easily Kickstarted all on itself, uh, which I don't think it was. I think it was actually attached as a part of like a, a mini game to the, to the campaign. You can correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but regardless, excellent quality 
artwork, stylization, and choice throughout this entire Roll and Write. If you like a Roll and Write game, if you like an adventure game, and if you enjoy just marking things off and moving around the board and competing with your opponents in a fantasy style adventure game, this one, Drawn uh, to Adventure, is so much fun. I highly, highly recommend it. This is going to get my seal of approval for Roll and Write games because it's one I would easily jump back in and play again. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comment section. There'll be a link where you can go and pick up the game for yourself. Tell me if you've played this game, why or why not? Is this something you'd pick up and why you did pick it up if you did? All right, outro. Thank you guys for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Drawn to Adventure. If you like the game, link down below in the description. Also, subscribe to the channel. Hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button to see more videos just like this, to see how to play these games and whether or not you want to pick them up based on maybe a little bit of uh, persuasion from us or dissuasion. <laughs> and of course, uh, if it's a game that you kind of are interested in most of these type of games, you'll know if it's something for you. Go ahead and hit the YouTube channel, no, not the YouTube channel, hit up the website. Go ahead and watch our blogs, reviews, Kickstarter lists, and giveaways. We're going to be doing more stuff, but we're moving. This is probably one of our last videos here in the studio. So thank you guys so much for watching us as long as we have in the studio. We're excited to show you a new studio, uh, tons of new content, and uh, different things that uh, will come along with having a space that's obviously a lot larger than this homemade uh, uh, bric-a-brac that I made, which I, I think I did a pretty good job of. Thank you guys so much. Patreon members, those of you supporting our live streams, we probably won't have one next week either, but it's every Wednesday, 6.30 p.m. PST. If you're interested in our new studio, it's going to be even more fancy, and we're going to have a new camera because this one is literally going out. Apparently, after 2,000 videos, it's time to get another camera. Thank you guys so much, and as always, I look forward to drawing myself in your adventure next time.